the star of the game last night. It wasn't the two assists from Ross Minton. It was the hat trick from Ryan McGuire, who doubled up his season goal total in the 6-3 victory at Princeton. And now here come the Cats. Quillen from Lee. Quillen from the slot scores! Quick strike for Quillen, and it's 1-0 Quinnipiac. Well, Quillen scored his sixth of the year last night. Now he has his seventh and his 17th point of the year. And boy, this is when the, the Bobcats are reminiscent, Phil, of Tyson and his prime. They can come out and just go at you right off the top. Snapshot from between the circles. But short side to beat the Islander and the Bobcats. 45 seconds in. Long pass ahead, stolen. Lee ahead to Serbone. Serbone moving to his left to Marcellus. Pass across, oh. score! And there it is! The first is a Bobcat for Zach Tupker, and the Cats lead 2 0. Well, Phil, I mentioned he'd like to get that to Bobcat, and he finally did, but what a, what a play. First of all, it started earlier with uh, Jaden Lee breaking up a, a play in the neutral zone as we see on the Cambria replay. There's Lee breaking it up. Look how quickly they move the puck. Pass right there and then talk about unselfish. And Lee gets it back. Marcelli's trying to move it ahead. Good work as it's taken in across the line. Colgate looking for an opportunity, a chance, and that's off the post. High slot, Bergslin fires and they score. A screen set in the low post by Ryan Sullivan. That puck looked like it changed direction and Colgate's on the board. Well, much needed goal by the Raiders there and they had an opportunity a few moments ago we thought caught iron, caught iron again here and then the rebound, they're able to fire it, uh, fire it home. So with uh, 16, 19 to go in the second period, it's a two to one hockey game. And no, when you, when you, when you hear the post and you're thinking kind of whew, as a goaltender, but you got it ready. In behind the net, shadowed by Tellier. Colgate looking to tie the score. Wrist shot just wide off the boards and taken behind the net by McGee. Unable to get it out. Now the Bobcats are kind of pinned in a rebound opportunity. Colgate ties it up on the score by Rexine. Well, Colgate has come out a totally different club in the second period. In the first period, it was all Quinnipiac. They possessed the puck the entire time, had the puck in the Colgate zone the entire time, but almost like, and, and can it be a penalty kill, something as simple as that, no, that they were able to kill that penalty that carried over in the second period because they've been dominant since then. Yeah, absolutely. I think that penalty kill was huge for them, especially with how hard. It is McGuire in on the draw, but the Bobcats control. Graf with it at the point, straight away to Lee. Across now to Andon Sermon. Sermon waits. He's got Graf on the left side now in the slot. Lipkin to Graf, score! 13 seconds. And Colin Graf on the power play makes it a 3-2 Bobcats lead. And you know, it's almost not fair. <laughs> and I was gonna, I almost thought to myself, when the puck was in front of Lipkin, Anderson to Sullivan, back to Anderson. Colgate working the perimeter now. Sound down low, they score! The puck changed direction on its way in, just a little bit of a knuckle puck, and Colgate has tied this game at three. Well, you've got to give the Raiders a lot of credit. Here the second pair, that's their third goal after they were outscored badly in the, uh, and outplayed badly in the first period. What did you see there? Uh, no, it's a great, a good setup, but certainly changed direction right there. Yeah, um, yeah, that, that puck was clearly tipped in front. That's really hard for Vinny. He does a good job of staying patient again and on his feet for that initial. He had a goal in the last game before that hat trick last night. So he has five goals in his last two plus games. Bobcats try to strike quickly again. Center point. Moore lets it go. They score. Cooper Moore the blast from the center point and Jacob Quillen. Tipped it at the top of the blue paint. It is a 4-3 Bobcats lead. You know, and I was going to say to Noah, if you're a goalie, a field goal kicker, or a closer in baseball, you've got to be able to turn the page and move on, right? And I think as a team, you just gave up the lead again. No problem. You get a power play, and you score just like that. They're a build. Can't get it. Well, they do get it to center, but now it's steal. Marcellus. The Sir Bone leaves it for Pennington. Pennington in the slot, and a shot, they score! Marcellus fights it through the pads of Guylander, and the Cats are back on top by two. 
Boy, what a find Marcellus has been, right? Seventh goal of the season, able to get it past Gylander, and that might be one. Gylander has made some big saves, might want that one back, but really I think Phil was a quick release. You know, the, the, the pass right there from Pennington and then a quick release, and Marcellus made a terrific stop. As there is Marcellus in front, Philly on Wade's try to feed it back across. Back to five on five, Marcellus scores again! The penalty was over, but Marcellus doesn't care. It's now 6-3, Cats! Well, on a nightly basis, these last six games or so, it's you know, eight goals, six goals, seven goals, five goals. I mean, they really have found their stride offensively, and Marcellus, part of it, scoring two tonight, scoring another goal last night, and now you're getting contributions from a lot of different guys, and that makes them a very dangerous team. Now, they're discussing something. They uh, may go back and look at that shorthanded chance. That, yep, there, were body, there were bodies in front of that net. I got to imagine Mike Carter may call for a review of that. And the, there were bodies in front. I didn't see, I didn't, here's the thing, I didn't see the puck go in, but I didn't see the puck not go in, if that makes sense. There were a lot of bodies in front. Yeah, we couldn't see the puck at all. We couldn't see the puck at all, so I'm not sure in that moment what actually happened if that one went in. And then eventually, you know, the light never went on, the officials never said anything. I think that's what they're calling for. The only other thing could be an offside back the other way but again you know and that was before the Marcellus goal if they're questioning whether it should come back because of an offside so you now there there really are two possibilities that I think they're looking at and we'll see no goal so wait a minute the which was no goal well that that's the question what are they reviewing no goal why is it no goal because the Bobcats are offside or no goal because of the shorthanding. Now there was no shorthanded goal. See, it just made sense that that was what they would be reviewing, but maybe it wasn't. No, we just said there was a review on the Quinnipiac goal. Okay. And it may just stay. Our goal is still, Quinnipiac goal is still good. So again, they were reviewing the shorthanded goal potential back there. They're gonna drop the puck right at center. Cam Boone told us that the, the sixth Quinnipiac goal that is good. Quinnipiac goal stands. Yeah, it stands. So when the official came out and said no goal, that just added to the confusion. Right. <laughs> it's no goal, and we were right. So they were reviewing whether Colgate had scored Correct. on that shorthanded chance where they got bodies out in front. They deemed that no goal. Marcellus' second goal does stand. And he picks up his second of the game. And for Mason Marcellus, his eighth of the season. Well, you know, Phil, it's the combination of first-year players and transfers with the guys coming back that have really started to, to mesh yeah. uh, over the last five or six games or so, right? And that's one of the things Noah talked about with the new guys and you know replacing 12 players from a year ago. You know, it always makes me think back to the 2018-2019 season where, I mean, most of it was a big first-year class because you didn't have the transfer portal and all of these grad students coming in. But you think about when it was Zach Metz as a freshman, Mike Lombardi, and then the bigger, you know, even bigger guys up front, Wyatt Bon Giamani, Ethan DeYoung. And then you look at, you know, this season's group where it's Marcellus and Serpone and McGroarty and, you know, and then the transfers that come in and then you're like, wow, there's really, there is a comparison there, I think, between the, those two classes of players coming in. Yeah, and it's just re replenishing, not rebuilding, and uh, just just a great job of recruiting, obviously, through the years. More Intellier, pitching in, more down low. Powers on this unit. Now pushed out wide on the falling shot by Christophe Tellier. Ten seconds left in the first penalty. A one-timer, and they score! Christophe Tellier with a bomb, and it's now 7-3, Cats! Well, Tellier set up on his off wing, was able to fire it past Skylander, and with 5.07 to go, 7-3, Quinnipiac. 
And it will be Moore picking up at least one of the assists, the primary. Puck loose at center, and now a giveaway as Colgate with a chance. Short-handed, they score. Dom Foglia, a short-handed goal, and the Raiders get one back. And the Bobcats turning the puck over. And uh, Sullivan made, was, made no mistake. Here's the turnover. And he slid along the ice, five hole. Exactly, yeah, that was Sullivan. I thought that was 15. 